Over the past decade, the world of right-wing media has blessed us with so many gems. I mean, over the last few years, we got God's Not Dead 1 and 2 by Pure Flix. On top of that, we recently got Trump Jr.'s book, literally called Triggered. And funny story about that, the RNC actually purchased thousands of copies so it would appear on the New York Times bestseller list. Yeah, that's embarrassing. But now we get a new gem. We get No Safe Spaces by Adam Carolla and uh, Dennis Prager of Prager U fame. And this is essentially a feature length version of the anti SJW videos that we see on YouTube by Tim Pool or Dave Rubin. So they're going to go on Tucker Carlson, promote this new documentary. I, I think it's a documentary, I believe it is. And um, they're not really even going to do a good job at promoting their documentary because, as you're going to see, they're going to spend a large portion of this video talking about fish, literally. Um, yes, fish. <laughs> and on top of that, they're going to basically pretend to be in favor of freedom of speech, but this is nothing more than pseudo-advocacy. They're not really saying anything. This is vacuous. It's frankly cringeworthy, but nonetheless, let's watch and then we'll discuss this train wreck. Freedom of speech is America's most distinctive right. It's a free country, remember they used to say that back when it was? But it's also the most embattled of all of our rights. In the name of safety and sensitivity, a coalition of big tech monopolists, universities, and political activists are fighting to limit what you're allowed to say and punish those who stray outside the accepted boundaries. Well, last year, comedian Adam Carolla, who was a genius, and radio host Dennis Prager, also kind of a genius, teamed up to release No Safe Spaces, a kind of brilliant documentary about the American anti-speech movement. Here's part of it. Israel sent me into the Soviet Union when I was 21 years old because I knew Russian and Hebrew and I was sent in to smuggle out the names of, of Jews that I would find in the Soviet Union and to smuggle in religious items and so on. And I really experienced what most people in the West have never, ever experienced, life under a totalitarian regime. It's a great movie. And if you want to see it in theaters, you still have a chance to do that. The film is having a limited re-release this weekend thanks to strong support from grateful viewers. Adam Krola and Dennis Prager join us tonight. Gentlemen, thanks both for coming on. I haven't talked to you since the film came out. To, to start with you, Adam, what was the risk? Did anyone tell you that you're not allowed to say the things you said in the film? Was it, did the irony loop come complete? Uh, it is interesting when people are talking about free speech, but it's free speech that they want to vet and make sure it's okay for them to hear before you can say it. I did notice the clip was all Dennis Prager, by the way, so I'm going yeah. to have to get my publicist on this. Yeah. This resentment is a very big problem. <laughs> well, I, th I think he may be is, close to one of my It's producers. a big problem. We, we, we enjoy each other too much. We're, 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 we're looking for problems. Yes, well, we're so, still in kind so of the newlywed the phase you, of our relationship. But, if, but even even newlyweds, they may sublimate it, but there's, there's usually tension. If you could identify one thing that divides you bitterly, what would it be? Uh, he likes gefilte fish, and I wouldn't feed that stuff to my cat. No, you said you did feed it to oh, your I cat. I did, I did feed you it to my cat. You said cat liked it. I asked you specifically how it went over in the Corolla home. You said the cat loved it. Yes, he gave me a jar of gefilte fish. Yes, I did. I, By the I, way, fish isn't supposed to be in jars. Just, just for no, your information, it's, no, it's supposed it's, to be on platters. No, or it's supposed to be above aquarium. a fireplace right. in a hunting lodge. <laughs> your aquarium. That's right. Exactly. By the way, so this was a danger working with him. Better? Yep. No, the well, so, fish mean, is so as bad as it's ever face. been. No, well, that's right. Oh, right. I don't think that there's any room for improvement there at all. But the question of speech, do you think the country has become freer or less free in the last year? No, it, it's, it, it, it's less free. There's no question. Uh, and you could, the, there's an interesting proof. Read the reviewers in the mainstream media, not to mention left-wing media, on how they have contempt for the film. When the film features liberal after liberal including President Obama speaking about what's going on on campuses. But they, they, they can't even acknowledge that this is going on when they see the film, which is about the suppression of speech. So I have Obama a slightly different feeling on it. 
Yeah. Okay. I, well, here's what I think. I feel like the pendulum is starting to swing back the other direction. I'm in the comedic community, and I feel a lot of my cohorts in the comedy world starting to push back against it because they're at their saturation level. And I feel like the group that started this thing is starting to double down on it, starting to really work it harder. It's sort of uh, the same subject as racism. As racism fades from our society, a certain group is tripling down their efforts to make sure it's alive and well, or at least we think uh, it's alive uh, and well. Right. Oh yes, racism has definitely gone away, folks. Black Americans are no longer being killed by the police, racially profiled, locked up at higher rates than their white peers, and they finally have reached parity economically with their white counterparts. Amazing. Thank you so much, Adam Carolla. I mean, what an idiotic thing for a rich white dude to say. And I'm sorry he's going to say that this is predictable because he probably thinks that the left thinks everything is racist, but denying the existence of racism is a form of racism. It is. Because even though we've made improvements in certain areas, that doesn't mean that the issue has just gone away. Like, to say something like that, you have to be so ignorant, so detached from reality that you're clueless. I mean, and Adam Carolla, I've never liked him as a comedian, even before I found out that he was a Republican, uh, because he is one of those people, like we all know one of these people, they're in our friend and social circles, that loves to tell jokes, not necessarily because they're inherently funny, but because they like to hear the sound of their own voice, and then they just look at you so you laugh and you have to fake laugh. <laughs> no, I'm not going to laugh at your stupid fucking dad joke, you dumb motherfucker, talking about fish over and over and over. Okay, we get it, move on. Like, they don't know when to move on from the joke, and because they elicited the reaction from you that they wanted, the laughter, then they keep going while not realizing, based on social cues, that your laughter was fake to begin with. I mean, this is someone that it's just so irritating to me. I can't stand him. He's just a whiny, um, <laughs> dare I say, snowflake? Now, anyways, regardless, moving on to their documentary. So Dennis Prager claims that we have less speech now. And, you know, I technically agree, but not necessarily for the reason that he cites. But the reason why we have less free speech in this country, the main reason he cites, is because look at the reviews for their movie. Critics didn't like it. Therefore, we have uh, less free speech because we're saying free speech is under attack and the people who watched this movie said the movie was shitty. Therefore, point proven. Is that really the argument that you're going to make? And he says that, you know, since I cited individuals like Barack Obama and, uh, you know, liberals, that should prove to you that I'm being impartial. So how dare you say that my movie is stupid. Dude, the SJW narrative has been long, long dead. And at this point, anyone on YouTube who still talks about it is beating a dead fucking horse. I mean, who is entertained by dozens of videos talking about how Captain Marvel is an SJW movie or pandering to SJWs? Who cares? I mean, this initially started as a movement of people online denouncing snowflakery on the left, which, sure, there's a degree of snowflakery on the left and the right, but it has devolved into a movement where they've become the snowflakes that they've once denounced. Tommy Lahren, who claims to be, you know, very anti-PC, feigned outrage on Fox News because someone in Connecticut, I think it was a public official, a city council member, dared to kneel during the national anthem. I mean, you all are fucking hypocrites. You have no room to talk. Now, Adam Carolla chimed in, and he let us know that there's a little bit of hope because, you know, his friends in the comedy world are starting to push back by, like, talking about SJWs because uh, Ricky Jervis got pushed back for doing edgy jokes about trans people that we've seen a hundred times. He's an Apache helicopter. That's how he identifies. I mean... The reason why you're getting pushback is because comedy is something that's subjective, right? Like, I I think that a lot of things are funny. Even offensive jokes can be funny. But if it's not funny, then people will call you out because it's not funny. And I think that a lot of uh, comedians mistake people not laughing at their jokes as outrage. But it's just not funny. I mean, trying to say that you identify as an attack helicopter to own trans people. That's not funny. We've heard the joke a thousand fucking times. So you have to come up with new material and actually do better. And you're not doing that. 
right? So anti-SJW comedy, sure, I think it could theoretically be funny. I've laughed at certain anti-SJW jokes admittedly before, but the reason why we're not laughing at you, the reason why we're not laughing at Jerry Seinfeld is because you guys are boomers who aren't funny. Generations change. What one generation finds funny, another generation will not. Like, this is largely generational. I find people in my generation really funny, right? Because they kind of have this the same worldview as me. I laugh hysterically whenever I listen to Chapo Trap House. I love Jake Flora as a comedian. So, I mean, like, you can't say to me that, oh, well, if you don't like my jokes, and he's not necessarily arguing this to be clear, but, oh, there, if you don't like that comedians are offensive and, you know, pushing the boundaries, then you're just snowflakes and you hate free speech. No. Offensive jokes can work if they're intelligent and you make a good point. It just, it has to be funny. And you, Adam Kroll, of all people, you're not funny. Like, who finds you funny? Other than Dennis Prager and Tucker Carlson, who tried to rein you two in on that, you know, robust fish conversation. I mean, this was such a stupid and cringeworthy segment. Um, I'm surprised that Fox News put it up on <laughs> their YouTube channel, but Fox News is shameless. So, yeah. Now, here's the thing about freedom of speech. The individuals like Dave Rubin, um, you know, Tucker Carlson, Dennis Prager, Adam Carolla, who constantly freak out about free speech, they don't actually care about freedom of speech. They don't care about the First Amendment because there are actual violations of the First Amendment that is the government's crackdown on freedom of speech that they don't even acknowledge are happening. Did Tucker Carlson address Trump's recent executive order that would limit free speech by punishing advocates of BDS? Has Adam Carolla defended fellow comedian Jake Flores when Homeland Security paid him a visit for making an offensive joke about ICE on Twitter? Has Dennis Prager defended a Texas school teacher who was literally fired because she wouldn't sign an Israeli loyalty contract? I mean, did any of these dipshits condemn Donald Trump for saying that we should literally jail people for burning the flag? No, the reason why they're talking about SJWs is because this is a narrative that complements the right-wing worldview. They want to make it seem like they're in favor of freedom, but you're not. You're not addressing the actual uh, stifling that we're seeing to free speech, largely done by Trump's administration. And if you truly care about freedom of speech and the First Amendment and other constitutional issues, how are you not talking about the NSA spying on Americans, collecting our metadata? Like, there are so many issues that you can promote that would prove to us in a better way that you care about freedom and liberty, but you don't. You're hucksters. So what you have to do is, you know, replicate the strategy that has built up a lot of audiences on YouTube. You attack people on college campuses for being offended by something. I mean, give me a break. Get the fuck out of here. This is so played out at this point. And for anyone who hasn't seen it, I will link to it in the description box. Watch my PragerU parody because I talk specifically about how these grifters profit off of this anti-SJW narrative. It's incredibly lucrative, which is why it hasn't died down and why we're still talking about uh, SJWs on college campuses, even when it's not relevant at all. When Donald Trump is president and when we're on the brink of war with Iran and the world is going to be engulfed by catastrophic climate change if we don't take action in 11 years. Like, that's not the real issue. The only way that the right can appeal to young people is by trying to be edgy and denouncing SJWs, and it's no longer working for them. Um, it's just sad and pathetic at this point, but I will absolutely laugh at their expense, because even though I don't find Adam Carolla funny, I do find his grift funny. He didn't make it in comedy, or he certainly doesn't have a career in comedy now, but seeing him, you know, uh, grift and be a right-wing uh Dave Rubin type of figure, it definitely is entertaining, and uh, I think that Mike Huckabee at this point has a more robust comedy career than Adam Carolla, so there's that. <laughs>